Welcome back, dear viewers of Mama Saint TV. We've just heard um, Dua Sabah from the other wonderful brother Ibrahim. Um, and now we're going to be um, welcoming um, someone who's really given us some good insight, um, informative, knowledgeable insight into sort of the mental health um, debates and discussions that we have that most of us and lay people who wouldn't really, if we don't have access to, you know, people that we are aware of who are suffering from these um, difficulties in their life on, on really what they what they go through. And it's been personally very informative to me. So I hope that you've been joining us every week um, to welcome our dear sister, Barak Hussein, who has come from Canada. She is a psychotherapist and also an online. You can find her as the Muslim counsellor. So join me now to welcome um, Sister Barak Hussain. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. How are you this morning? Alhamdulillah. Good. Did you Awake. enjoy the duas? Of course, always. Alhamdulillah, good. So we're going to pick your brains. It's a very sad and heavy topic. Um, and again, it'd be nice to hear from your perspective how prevalent this is in our community. Um, we hear about big cases on um, self -harm, well, suicidal feelings. Um, and you know, is it relatable to us in our community? Is it happening? Um, and really, um, what kind of feelings go through a person? Are they just, you know, one day get up and they have these feelings or is it a progressive kind of, um, so yeah. Yeah, it, it is happening in our communities, just like other mental health struggles. And if not taken care of properly, it could lead to suicidal thoughts. So somebody who could be experiencing low moods, depression, uh, symptoms around that, and feels hopeless, loss of despair, um, and, and feels that there's no way out. So it could, it could lead from having depression, but it could also suddenly come on if let's say somebody experiences a shocking uh, mm -hmm. tragedy or something that is just too much for them to handle and they feel they cannot face the people, their families, the communities, their friends, whatever situation it may be, they may decide then and there, I'm done, I'm taking my life, I, I, just, I choose not to deal with this, I can't deal with it. So th there's a lot mm -hmm. within the Islamic perspective on that in terms of halal, haram, you know, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to, taking your life is as though you're taking somebody else's life, yeah. that's what it's looked at. Um, I've had discussions with scholars about this yeah. and alimas because it, when, when it comes down to it, um, the person who has taken their lives, their families are left yeah. in shame and mm. guilt and worry and you know on top of the grief of losing of someone grief, that exactly. they could have helped them and prevented such a tragedy so yeah they must go through and, and we'll look at that in terms yeah. of how to, to help support but then there there's mm. that stigma around that and it, throughout the various discussions that I've had over the years it, it came down to you know this person is mentally unwell yeah they're not fit to make a decision a right. proper decision um, and there wasn't a conclusive, yeah. uh, it's again, the judgment is not up to us no, in the end. it's not. But this person is not well. Yeah. How do you treat a person who's not well with mercy? Yeah. And we cannot judge anybody Definitely. who's struggling, you know, through that and, and having these thoughts. We cannot be the haram police, as no. I say, and, and judge and say, well, you can't have these thoughts. You can't decide to do this. Yeah. And well, well, no, the person really needs validation in terms of the struggle that they're experiencing. And we want to take them out from that darkness into the light to give them hope, things to live for again. And so through the therapeutic process, when I have students coming in, clients coming in saying, yeah. you know, I don't, a variety of things could be, uh, I'm sure our viewers could connect with some of these ideas in terms of, I don't want to live. I, um, Do they come out and say it? They say they, these words. They yeah, you like pick I will, the... sometimes I will ask, because they have an intake form that they fill out, right. and sometimes it would be written. Yeah. I've had suicidal thoughts, I don't want to live. Um, so I will, I will straight out ask, and sometimes if it's written there, even if it's not, when I see it's somebody who's dealing with depression, I have to ask yes. for safety. Yes. Have you had thoughts of harming yourself mm. or wanting to end your life? Like I'll gradually get into it. Sometimes it's a yes. Sometimes it's a, you know, I don't have thoughts of killing myself, but I don't want to live. So here's the mm. variety. So yeah. I don't want to live. Uh, it's too much. I don't want to be alive. So there's a difference between I don't mm. want to live anymore, mm. I don't want to be alive, I, I'm, uh, I want to kill myself. See, there's a difference. Yeah. So some people don't want to kill themselves, but they don't want to be alive either. You see the difference? Yeah. It's just too much. They, don't, they just don't want to exist. So are they, generally speaking, are they 
there's an illness underlying these thoughts that are chemically based, am I correct? And then if they are saying things like that, um, do they really mean it? I mean, is there a scale of these thoughts that perhaps sometimes, just thinking about some views that perhaps people go through and they think, you know, they have enough, you know, life gets hard, to something that's just like, you know, those people that take it forward. How does it work? How is the sort of the stages of these kind of, you know, thoughts that go process and... Well, I'm going to say something that you might find shocking, but we've all had thoughts of not wanting to be alive. Mm. There's a difference of that in terms of sometimes things get too much or we'd rather be in mm. Jannah, you know, mm. we'd rather not deal with the struggles of life. There are these passing thoughts that we have. And that's... That's okay. normal in the okay. sense that it's common. It right. happens. And, you know, I wouldn't think much of it. It's just mm. you feel so tired sometimes. You just feel like, Ugh, I don't want to... Yeah. Yeah. deal with this, I don't want to exist, you know, dealing with these issues. We've had these thoughts. Yeah. But that's not it, a red flag, that's, really. I mean, if somebody is dealing with depression and whatnot, we definitely want to address that right. because it could develop into something further. The issue becomes more prevalent and something that you want to focus more on to, when people are saying things when they come to you in an off conversation, you still want to check it out. But when they're coming to you and trying to get treatment and saying, I don't want to live, you know, I've had suicidal thoughts. So we take it further and say, do you have a plan? Yeah. Some say, um, no, I haven't thought of how. Some say, yeah, I have. Wow. And it could range from overdosing with pills to, so they've I'm had not a giving ideas here. No. I, but they, they go through way. a process in the mind of how of they're how going they to. how they would do it, how, whether they hang yeah. themselves, throw themselves off the bridge. There's a bridge yeah. near our university. Yeah. So you hear things like yeah. that. That is alarming for yeah. a counselor to hear. Yeah, okay, so there is an idea of how they could do that. Yeah. So the next question I would ask is, is this something you could do, you would do after you leave here today? Most of the time it's no, I wouldn't do it. My question, next question would be, what holds you back? Yeah. Most of the time, if it's somebody from a religious background, whether they're Muslim or not, would say God. Mm -hmm. My religion does not allow it. And I hear that right away. Usually the first answer with Muslims is my religion does not allow it. Yeah. So that's a good thing. It holds something yeah. is keeping them from getting to that point. Mm. Um, my friends and family, I would never want to disappoint my family. It'd be too much for my family to experience that. Oh, right. Yeah. So that that holds them back as well. Yeah. I've had clients say there's so much to live for. There's mm. uh, there's so much work I want to do with my humanitarian degree. There's hope there. Yeah. There. And what I say is, do not. There's always. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's a good saying. I'm just trying to remember how I say it properly. Um, suicide is a permanent solution. Mm for a temporary problem. Mm -hmm. Don't base yeah. your decision, yeah. a permanent uh, solution, yeah. to something that is temporary in your life right yeah. now. You have not always been this way. You will not always be that way. This is right now. So let's work with the right now. Mm -hmm. And so we have this assist training, which is a, a suicide um, training or assistant to get people out mm. and anybody can take this training not just counselors and it's designed to help you mm. go from being hopeless to help you look at things worth living for okay. and so we go Makes through that sense. process yeah. in the counseling uh, session mm. now going back to what you were describing in terms of is this a chemical imbalance mm. and whatnot it leads back to depression mm. what is depression we said come back to not taking care of stress properly, perhaps, mm -hmm. or it's a predisposition that's been triggered, right? Yeah. And the other aspect here we looked at is also sudden huge changes in your life, tragic, sad, that you can, you know, loss of money in the stock market or you, you lost your job, you cannot provide for your family. Um, something horrendous happened to you, you just shut down, you feel you cannot cope, you can't face the community, your family shut down. People can make that decision as well. How, how um, like as I was saying in the beginning, how prevalent is it in our communities? It's happening, unfortunately, which is one of the reasons why the Serenity Islamic Mental Health Awareness Group in my community in mm -hmm. Ottawa, it was based off of that, unfortunately. Right. There were two young men in our community who took their lives, Oof. and we found out afterwards they were struggling with depression. They didn't, weren't getting the right supports. Goodness. And so I, we said enough. We want to do more awareness in the community so that people don't Prevent, feel they, that yeah. they're hopeless and there's nothing left, the so, loss of despair there. 
what could have a community done to prevent? I mean, look, that's an amazing effort it's, and initiative, but in, in the communities that sort of perhaps aren't so aware of mental health, you know, um, struggles that people have, what more can a community do to sort of We need help? to be talking about mental health, which is why it's so important we have shows mm. like this uh, where we talk about topics that are taboo, yeah. that are, um, you know, a lot of shameful things, uh, that are things that we're not used to hearing because our own religion talks about balance, yeah. inner peace, outer peace, love, akhlaq, humility, all of these things are the he essence also talks of wellness. Of all, 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 in, I think the, the most crucial point, and as well as those, is is the non-judgment non -judgment that you said, non as even as, as in your compassion. position, that as you said, when people unfortunately go through these circumstances, type of circumstances, they're already suffering. And for us to then pass the judgment jury and say that's it you're condemned who wants to know you and it's awful isn't it so you well, must... it pushes it pushes yeah. people away yeah if you have somebody who's struggling coming to a center and then they don't know how to approach or talk yeah. but when we have these events in our centers you know you find a, a, a slew of people who come yeah. at the end of the lecture and they're wanting to talk to you ask questions which is a wonderful thing alhamdulillah yeah. and then you can direct them to resources yeah and we want to reach out, which is why when we have shows like this, people may not come to an event because they're too no. depressed or too anxious to leave the yeah. house. But then they get the opportunity to hear these things and resources that perhaps they can reach out, yeah. you know, and, and access these resources when they are feeling low. Now, when a client comes in and we go through all of that, we also make um, a safety plan. And in that safety plan, we'll have phone numbers of people right. that they could turn to yeah. in that moment when they're feeling this way. What could they, could they, could they do instead? of going to the plan of harming themselves. And one of the things I find humorous, but works, um, is to say, eat chocolate. I see the chocolate on your face, eat chocolate. Mm. So what is it I've about never, chocolate? You know, I wouldn't imagine that. It was actually in one of the worksheets that I have, yeah. and I found that humorous, but there's a science behind it. Right. What happens when you eat chocolate? Pleasure. You feel good. Yeah. What is it about chocolate? There's a lot of research yeah. on chocolate. <laughs> so see, you laugh now, but and, and mm. when I go through that list with the client, they laugh too. I'm like, make sure you got lots of chocolate, <laughs> you know on hand, there's something about chocolate that changes the mood and it, it distracts you as well. Mm. It's a distraction, right? So it's a, uh, it's designed to, to d this whole safety plan distracts you from wanting to go down that route because then it reminds you of the people that care about you and would be there for you or the emergency contacts that you can get a hold of. So when we look on social media, for instance, um, you know, various pe friends of mine will post things like, you know, um, if you feel down or, you know, you're, you're, you're going through any depression or some sort um, or feeling very low mood, I'm always there to listen. But in reality, um, how can you help somebody? Say they come and they, they confide in you as a friend or a relative, whoever. Um, what's the best way to deal with somebody that's perhaps, um, or even pick up the signs that something needs to be, you know, more help needs here. What, what are we supposed to do? So some of the signs that you see that somebody's dealing with depression um, could include, um, you know, lack of hygiene, the loss of interest in activities, not coming, attending like they used to, gain of, uh, gaining of weight, because sometimes people overeat, some yeah. people undereat, so loss of weight, um, loss of pleasure in things that they in, used to enjoy and participation, correct? Yeah. So these are some of the signs we said of depression over a long period of time. Um, and so if that continues, the person could start saying things like, you know, what's the point mm -hmm. of my studies? What's the point of what I'm doing? I don't yeah. see any point in living. These are some things to, yeah. to watch out for. Trigger you know, words, yeah. uh, Children may exhibit that differently if they're being bullied at school. And we've, we've heard of young children yeah. taking their lives, unfortunately. And because parents were not paying attention to the no. cues. So they're, they're it's very difficult for parents, isn't it? There's so much that goes on in a child's life to then think, is my child being a drama queen? Is my child actually, does they So do they, they need, act, to, yeah. they so need to test hard, that yeah. out. They need to go to the school, see what's going on. Yeah. I hear my daughter sometimes complaining to me about, you know, this, this yeah. kid in the class said this. I didn't have a good day because but yeah. I've given her the open space for her to feel comfortable yeah. sharing with me. Parents need to create that. And if there's something more serious, I'll pick up the phone and call yeah. the school and say, hey, this kid's picking on my kid, what's going on? Yeah. It turns out this kid picks on all the kids, you know, yeah. so it's not just isolated to her. But parents need to get off their phones when their children are around and pay attention yeah. to their needs. Yeah. Why are their kids talking to them or trying to get their attention? Sometimes kids act out at school, Yeah. right? because there are things going on at home that parents mm. are not paying attention to, or there are things happening at school. So you have to watch out for these things. 
Why are your kids turning yeah. to you? Why are you not listening to them? Yeah. Please get off the phone and pay attention to your children. For example, the phone, dinner time, should be a basket away. Yeah. The rule that no phone's on here. Connect and associate uh, with each other. Talk. Isn't it odd? We have to, you know, we, we remind ourselves to do these things, which, you know, 10, 15 years ago wasn't even an issue that you no. could, you know, meal time, sit down, catch up. But we were literally in the last minute. But any last sort of words of um, advice to the viewers if they have somebody who they're concerned about what to do? I would advise to reach out, mm -hmm. not just uh, how are you doing the stiff uh, upper lip, as you say yeah. here. When you say how are you, mean it. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Yeah. You want to go for a coffee, invite. Invite yeah. them out to go for dinner or coffee. Invite them over, you go over. Yeah. Th that person is feeling isolated, feeling that nobody cares about them, mm. feeling that there's no hope left. And what's the point? Mm. Was you reaching out and connecting this way, as awkward as it may seem, or you feel that you're uh, invading their space, if they're in danger, yeah. you know, that is just the thing that could pull them back. And for those who are struggling, please, please, please call the helplines. They are there to help you. Yeah. And they are there to refer you to the appropriate resources. The Muslim Youth Helpline is a wonderful resource yeah. here. In Canada, we have Nasiha, mm -hmm. Muslim. And it's now not just for Muslims, it's for everybody because really, yeah. there's been yeah. people from different backgrounds calling in. So these, the Distress Center call line, we have that in Ottawa. So there's all these resources when you are alone, okay, that you can reach out to and call and yeah. talk to somebody who's a professional that's trained, they can help you in this matter so you're not feeling isolated. Because you just need to talk to somebody to help you get through those dark moments to Definitely. see that there is hope. Like I said, this is a permanent solution for a temporary problem. You don't want to make that, you know. Um, you don't want to have that, those no. kind of regrets because there are people who attempt. Yeah, yeah. Do not, when we say do not succeed, meaning they did not end up killing themselves. Yeah. And so sometimes it's an eye opener for them. It's an eye opener that that was an error, that was a mistake. I don't want that. I, want, I need to get help. Okay. We don't want no. our friends and family get getting to that point. No. So we want to offer the non judgmental uh, attitude, yeah. support. Even if you don't know what to do, just yeah. be there and listen. Take them to the hospital. Take them to a professional. Go with them to the appointment yeah. if you can't be there to support Interject them. Interject where you feel appropriate. Absolutely. Because it's rather that than feeling, oh, I don't want to overstep my boundaries or make it awkward. There's Especially no save a life. Yeah, you're saving you're someone's life. life. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, It's just flown by again. Um, inshallah, people who listen to this, you know, take advice um, if it's anything's relevant. Um, and again... Um, if you want to reach out to Sister Barak Hussain, she is on social media and Instagram, Facebook as the Muslim, Muslim counsellor. So um, please do utilise those resources and people will re redirect you to where is appropriate. Inshallah. Inshallah have a blessed day. You too, and, Sister. Um, Inshallah, we will now go on to um, another conversation with um, Dr. Yasser Madhani and we're discussing asthma.